Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss and analyze the poem My Mother at 66 by Kamala Das, which has been taken from the anthology Flamingo. The poem, which has which is a small poem and has been beautifully penned down by the famous poet Kamala Das, who used to write under the pseudonym. Madhavi Kutti was a Keralaite. She was from Kerala and she is known for her very sensitive and uh, a humane poetry that touches a number of angles of human relationships. And in this particular poem, the uh, poet has definitely touched the most beautiful of human relationships which is that of mother and daughter. So out of all the beautiful relationships in the life of a human being, this is the most beautiful relationship and she has touched upon it and this whole poem brings out this vulnerability in the relationship of you know love and fear and a sense of loss when the child grows up to be an adult and then they realize that the parent also has grown old and ultimately they might in the coming future leave them. So, uh, when we look at the setting of the poem and we will be reading the poem just now, but when we look at the setting of the poem, we see that the poet is en route to the airport. She is going to Cochin from her parents house and uh, this place is where she is going to catch her flight. So, we realize that the place where her parents live and her own place, it must be quite far away because she has to first of all take a flight, then she reaches Cochin and then she will have to drive to her parents home and right now she is taking this journey back. So, uh, now that we have drawn this arrow, we also realize that journey is another metaphor that we need to look out for when we read this poem. It is very important the journey here she is taking this journey from her parents place to her own place. She is uh, driving in a car first of all and then she is supposed to take a flight. But then this journey itself represents life. How life moves on one has to. One just cannot stop because life must move on and this journey ultimately must come to an end with a person's death. So, journey is a very important metaphor when we read this poem. So, you know, while she is journeying with her mother, she realizes that her mother is old now and that the inevitability of course, we know the meaning of inevitable. Inevitable means something which must happen and you just cannot escape it. It is something which is inescapable. So, that the inevitability of death is imminent. So, she is faced with this question. She is faced with this reality that death is going to do them apart that someday you know uh, again uh, the fear of separation 
you can call it the pain of a loss which is going to be in the future she knows that this is going to happen and that she is going to be separated from her mother she has to bear the loss because now she looks at her and she realizes maybe this is something she had not realized before that her mother is growing old and ultimately she is going to lose her and and um, when we uh, when we read this poem we also uh, see how the structure of the poem is one whole sentence so she has not put a full stop anywhere in between you look in this poem it just moves on and on and on and it only stops here you know when she ends this poem so it is one whole sentence life is like that it is continuous it just moves and moves and there are there are pauses but the ultimate full stop comes with death so just like life just like this journey it ha it had the poem begins just like life had begun and it is going to end just like life ends with death so before we write more about this because we must write you know a lot here we we shall discuss the poem first and um the poem my mother at 66 by kamala das of course 66 is a figure a figure which uh, tells us the age of the mother it could be anything it is just to tell us that the mother is not young anymore so it reads driving from my parents home to cochin last friday morning i saw my mother beside me so the well, what has the poet been doing she has been driving and and she has she is driving to cochin we have discussed this before that first it is a journey by car and after all she has to take a flight from cochin which is a big city of course a city which would have the airport and she says i saw my mother beside me so she looks at her mother who is uh, sitting with her dozing so now i will just put number 1 over here because uh, let us discuss this first uh, and then i will tell you why i have written number 1 over here she says my, uh, beside me doze open mouthed her face uh, and i'm i'm going to put number 2 here so number 1 and number 2 doze open mouthed her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked so before i tell you the meaning of this line i i i must tell you why i have written number 1 and number 2 over here so when the poet looks at her mother she sees two signs of aging on her face what are the two signs of aging which we had written over here number 1 and number 2 the first one is dozing so old people do that all the time if you have grandparents if you have seen them you know they would be just talking to you one minute and the other minute in the same chair they're just dozing off so you know just like small children do even old people do that they wouldn't realize but they just doze off they sleep off and suddenly they would awake you know they they all almost like small children so dozing this is one sign of aging and of course she says open mouthed so she's dozing in the car and the second uh, sign of aging is the colorlessness of the face so the face of the mother is colorless here she has used the word ashen ashen means devoid of color you know 
the the blood that is running uh, through us so uh, if you have seen young children they are so pink you know they would blush their their face is so flushed all the time signs of youth signs of energy of life but here the mother shows signs of aging and these are imminent signs of death because she compares this uh, here if we come back to our poem here so ashen this word is used over here and the poet says her face ashen like and now i circle this because again this is important because the word like tells us that this is a comparison and because the poet has used the word like so it becomes the poetic device of simile so she says her face ashen like that of a corpse so explained here that the poet has used a poetic device of simile which is a form of comparison so let us uh, write this down right here that uh, the poetic device that the poet has used is simile where he has compared the mother's face with a corpse and what is a corpse it is a dead body so she feels that you know the the because the color of the mother's face has uh, faded it it is so bloodless you know uh, because i had explained to you what the meaning of ashen is so it is devoid of blood so she feels that uh, she does not look young and hence these two points point number 1 and point number 2 they become the symbols of mother's aging and this is what the girl uh, the daughter the poet feels about her mother and here uh, as i read further i also uh, would like to stress upon the predominant feeling of pain this feeling of pain and the fear of loss is a very very predominant emotion throughout the poem this is what the daughter feels about her mother and she says do she was dozing open mouthed her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked so this is as if it is she is seeing it for the first time and she realizes okay that uh, her mother is really really old and then she says i put that thought away and as i have written over here putting that thought away means it is like a, a when you are fearful of some thought when you are fearful uh of uh, something which you don't want to look at you want to ignore you just run away from it and you uh look out you look away and you don't want to face it so right now because she's in the car and she's looking at her mother so she just looks outside if i look outside i would be able to ignore what is inside the car and here let me just write this down for you which is something which is very important that in these lines these lines there are two worlds there is a world inside the car and there is a world outside the car and how is the world inside and outside different the first thing is that inside is the mother and outside she says if we just read these lines and complete this afterwards she says looked out at young trees sprinting and merry children spilling out of their homes so i have already written point number 1 and point number 2 over here because these are the two things young trees and merry children that she finds 
uh, you know, when she looks outside, she feels as if she is looking at the young world outside. While inside the car, her mother is there who is representing the old, uh, the dying. And uh, also it is very interesting to see how she has used the term sprinting over here. And what is sprinting? Sprinting is... Um, running fast so as if in a race so of course this is something which we all have seen when we have been traveling uh, in a car or in a vehicle we, we feel as if you look out the window and you feel as if the trees are running but uh, we all know that if the trees are still it is the car or the vehicle which is moving but here running symbolizes energy it symbolizes an active life and it is something which is not there in the car. It is outside the car. So it is as if the world is moving on. It is a young world, a gr growing, developing world uh, where there are young people. Uh, but uh, when, uh, uh, you know, she looks inside, it is a dying world. So there are these two worlds which are moving simultaneously. Uh, the old and degenerating, the young and developing, generating, sprouting. So here um, she uses the term young trees sprinting and the merry children spilling out of their homes. So there are these children who have so much energy. They can't stay in one place. They are just running, you know, going out of their home, playing. All this active life is going on out outside. So outside she finds young trees and merry or happy children who are playing, running and enjoying uh, themselves. So inside it is like death because old age is symbolic of death. And here, uh, I think I should put point number one over here because in comparison. So here it is your youth. So inside it is youth and outside it is old age. So these are the two contrasting, contrasting worlds. So this is a major contrast that you will find in this poem. Uh, but how long can she ignore this? After all, she has to face her mother again. But before we move on, I must say that we have another poetic device over here. The second poetic device uh, that she has used, it is personification. And we all know what personification is. Personification is to represent a non-living non object or a stationary object like a human being. So person, a person personification this word person is important as if you can say making a person when a poet makes something look like a person behave like a person has the attributes of a human being then the device is personification here young trees are sprinting it is as if they are not trees but young people who are running so uh, this is personification so with what is personified if you if you get a, a small a short question in the reference to context also uh, uh, you know what is the uh, the poetic device that the poet has used in these lines so you can say the poet has personified the trees in these in these lines and also you can get it in the poetic devices so this is one of the poetic devices that the poet has used so we move on with the the next line of the poem and uh, here as you see uh, I, I, I said that how long can you uh, escape something even though it is something you don't want to face so so the health of a mother the imminent or maybe something which is inevitable the death of her mother because she's so old uh, this the poet has to face she has to come to terms with it and how long can she look out? She has to look in and here she is back.
to the same position where she says but after the airport security check of course you remember that they were going to the airport to Cochin standing a few yards away and here see how beautifully she uses distance this is uh, uh, this is something we should be, maybe we should stop here and and uh, think about it how the poet is using distance you know proximity distance uh, to uh, to define her relationship with her mother so here she says she's standing just a few yards away because right now her mother is at some distance uh, before if i just uh, take you back to the initial lines of the poem you had this uh, term beside so beside this is one term okay and it is also a term which uh, symbolizes some kind of proximity when you are very sitting very close to somebody and now here the distance is increasing because now the mother is a few yards away because she is traveling and not the mother the mother is not traveling so she is traveling so now when you are in the airport and you are the passenger and somebody has come to see you off so then there is a distance maybe the mother is standing outside and she is inside and now uh, there is this little distance but this distance is going to increase please see how uh, the, the distance also is a very important factor in a relationship she cannot be with her mother all the time uh, she cannot be close to her mother all the time right now they were together in the car then there is this little distance because they are at the airport and after that the, the distance is going to increase because she is going to take her flight back home but even more than that is the distance really going to increase so much that she will never be able to see her mother again why why would we say that the distance is going to increase that much because ultimately the distance is going to be the distance of life and death so when the mother moves on to the other world she dies then the distance is really going to be too much unbearable something which will never be uh, she will be able to close up so this this point here uh, the point of proximity and distance even though she has not written too much about it but as a reader we really appreciate how she's using this that you know when they were in the car they were sitting beside each other so this is very really close so when they are at the airport uh, then it is few yards away so the distance is increasing and then when she takes her flight and goes back home she will be miles away from her mother of course and the distance keeps on increasing and ultimately if the mother dies which the poet really fears this is the real fear you know in the uh, poem if the mother dies then the distance is uh, is enlarged it is so much which cannot be closed up again so this is how the poet has used the the symbolism of proximity and distance so even this symbolism becomes our poetic device there are a number of symbols earlier also i had told you when we had started with the poem that journey itself is a symbol in this poem so uh, let us move on with the poem and and she she says standing a few yards away i looked again at her so she has to look at her mother again and she sees the same thing that she had seen in the car this is almost a repetition when pale as a late winter's moon so just uh, like before we had found a, a simile we have found a simile again and this is another poetic device 
which is a simile this time the mother's face is wan and pale which means again it means dull and colorless uh, of course you remember how she has used the word ashen before so ashen also meant uh, to be dull and colorless and bloodless these two words also mean the same but this time the comparison is not with the dead body uh, but uh, the comparison is with the winter's moon now if i may ask you why has the poet not compared with the moon but, but uh, she has rather compared with the winter's moon the reason is that uh, a moon is bright so you, if you want to symbolize something which is bright and young maybe that's where beautiful maybe that's where you can use this the comparison of the moon but here she rather uses the comparison of a winter's moon it is the same moon it is the same phase but right now it is dull and it is faded uh, because the winter's moon because of the fog you know uh, the winter's moon is dull and faded so this is the poetic device that she uses over here um, just give me a second and I'm going to change the page because we need to write much more now because she, uh, she says um, now please note down that this is important I, and felt before this also I have mentioned to you that some feelings and emotions are very pro predominant in this uh, poem and now it is another feeling that she is talking about she says that this is not the first time this is not the first time that that she has experienced this feeling of pain or maybe hurt or maybe loss. Uh, this is not the first time that she has experienced this experienced this feeling of pain and fear and loss. Why? Why is it not the first time? because earlier we had said that she is realizing it now before this she had not really realized how the mother is growing old so why is it not the first time because the first time the earlier time was the time of childhood now this is important why because as a child you or oh, every child when they are so young and you know the mother just goes away for five minutes or ten minutes or maybe she's in the kitchen the child becomes teary the child starts crying and the child becomes cranky as to you know where my mama is where my mama is and the child has the similar feelings of pain and loss you know as if the mother has gone away and the child has lost the mother of course the mother comes back and the child becomes happy but here the child the poet she is an adult and she knows that if she loses her mother now she is never going to get her back again so it is an old and familiar ache and what is the meaning of this word of course it means pain and when we say old and familiar the word that we use is nostalgia so it is nostalgia it is the, the the experiencing something which had happened to you quite some time before so it is the same feeling which is coming back to her she is nostalgic she she remembers that she had felt the same way when she was a child so she says and felt that old familiar i have written both these words over here old and familiar ache ache means pain my childhood's fear and of course she elaborates here also that this is the same thing she had felt as a child but all i said was 
see you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. So, it's so important. Can she say all of this that she is feeling right now inside her to her mother? Of course not. She is saying goodbye. This is the time when she has to say farewell. But she cannot tell her mother how fearful she is right now. She almost fears that this might be the last time she is seeing her mother. Maybe she lives so far away. When I come back the next time, maybe I am not able to see my mother. So what does she, uh, she say? Uh, th this is another poetic device that the poet has used over here. It is, it is uh, repetition and she repeats the word smile, smile and smile and you get a question regarding this also. What is this, uh, uh, the question that we get and the question is why does, why do you think the poet only smiles in the end and doesn't say anything to the mother? So we have to of course give some reasons but this is so open ended. Every reader has his or her own interpretation. Why is the um, poet only smiling and not saying anything? Uh, so maybe you can say the first reason could be she is hiding her fears uh, from her mother. She does not want to. upset her then another reason could be the guilt of going away and leaving her mother alone at this age so leaving your old parent alone there are many children who feel uh, you know, who get this feeling as to uh, what is important if their career or their personal life is important or their parents are important. This is a very, very important, very, very difficult decision that some children have to make when they grow old, uh, when they grow into adults. They choose a career, a life for themselves, but they also have to sacrifice their time with their parents. So th maybe this is the feeling of guilt. And maybe we can also say this is a kind of a false hope that she is giving herself. Uh, that nothing is to be feared. She just feels that maybe I'm overthinking or nothing is going to happen. And he smiles and smiles and smiles. So this is how the poet ends this poem. It's a very very beautiful and a touching uh, um, poem and, um, and maybe we can just revise a few things and the first thing I need to just put down over here are all the poetic devices that the poet has used. Of course she has used similes in two places. Uh, one she has compared the mother's face to the um uh, to the trees oh i'm sorry <laughs> she has not compared the mother's face to the trees but she has compared the mother's face to the corpse and later on she has compared uh, the mother's face to the winter's moon then we have uh, the second poetic device which is metaphor and we know uh, i had told you that journey is a very important metaphor uh here a symbolism I have told you how distance and proximity are important symbols for the relationship that she has with her mother uh, the next poetic device is of course personification and here I need to write down trees because the trees have been personified by the poet then uh, this this one a repetition she has repeated these words again to stress her current emotion um, and lastly I must mention how there is this another poetic device of alliteration 
alliteration means when words with similar initial sounds come uh, together in a sentence so uh, the poet uses this poetic device also and uh, uh, let me see if i can show you uh, in in the initial lines where she has used this here sprinting and spilling these two words come together in one line spur spur sprinting spur spilling so these are uh, initially the the sounds of uh, which come initially in the word they are similar sounds so you can find such alliterations in many poems and they give a good uh, rhyme to the poem uh, so this is what the poet has used so i just write over here spilling and sprinting so the spur sound is the same and uh, i cannot finish my video uh, before i mention something another thing which is important it is the rhyme scheme you have already seen the structure of the poem it is in one continuous line but there is no fixed there is no fixed rhyme scheme and such a poem is called a free verse sometimes you might have heard blank verse also it's just a little bit different because in free verse and blank verse there is no rhyme scheme there are no rhyming words but the only difference is that in free verse there is another thing and that is uh, that in free verse there is no fixed line length also so you will notice in this poem that some lines are short and some are longer even though this is not how you technically explain a free verse but this is how simply you can understand that firstly there is no rhyme scheme and secondly there is no fixed line length because otherwise you would count the syllables but i can this is not a place where i should explain syllables to you so maybe this is a very easy way of understanding a free verse and uh, now the last thing that we need to cover are the themes there are many important themes in the poem and while we have read them you must have understood them also but i just write them down again so the very important theme i have said this again and again it is the fear of loss as if you know you know that there you are going to lose something in the coming future and it is the fear which is eating you and eating you up right now something which is going to happen in the future you can also call it a call it a um, premonition that you know you are almost predicting a loss then pain of separation the mother daughter relationship very special and a beautiful relationship and um, then of course there is this contrast between old age and youth uh, which i had uh, uh, written about two worlds inside and outside the car and lastly it is the nostalgia this is the pain which is not new in a child's life this is a pain which just happens twice once when you are very young and the second time when you are grown and your parents are old and you have this feeling of loss that you had as a child that maybe you are going to lose your parent again so this is where i end my video i hope you have understood and i hope you have enjoyed thank you very much